every parent wants healthy children. I mean, I think that's like one of the most important things you just pray about before you ever have a child. And so when you start to see them maybe lagging behind their peers, you kind of go, okay, well, what is, what's, you know, is this anything? Is this nothing? Things just always seem like a little difficult, more so than other families. I noticed Grace was starting to need a little help when she was three. And then in 2016 is when she was diagnosed with autism. And so that kind of explained a lot. We're like, oh, okay, this is what's going on. So January 2016 was a huge month for us. Grace was diagnosed with autism. Grant was diagnosed with a growth hormone deficiency. It was a lot. I mean, it was a lot. But then it keeps getting worse. We thought 2016 would be the hardest year we would ever have. And we were wrong. Because Grace wasn't growing, she went and saw the same specialist that Grant was seeing. They ended up ordering a, a very detailed genetic panel, and that's when we found out that Grace had uh, multiple sulfatase deficiency. I just looked like online, and I was like, I've never even I've never even heard about this in all my medical school. Just reading like quick like one sentence I could find is like rare childhood disease, you know, average age of death ten years old. And it just kind of had to think that life was never going to be the same after that. Children become blind, and they can't hear, they can't walk. They, they basically develop like symptoms of like Alzheimer's disease. They won't be able to swallow, eventually they won't be able to breathe. You remember this part? Oh yeah, I got it, I got it. Finger, put your finger right there. Yeah, I got it, okay. I got it. Ready? Grace was diagnosed February 15th of 2019. And then there was a short period in between that we truly prayed that Grant wouldn't have it. And when Grace went to her first um, MSD appointment, literally I had a spreadsheet of like how similar Grace and Grant were. I mean, truly our worst nightmare came true that both children would have MSD. When I got the call, it was just literally life-shattering. It was the worst news a parent could hear. Our precious sweet babies that we brought into this world have quite possibly the worst possible diagnosis that you could get. And there's so little information for the doctors that they can't even give you hope that basically you go home and just be with your children because there's no treatment, there's no cure, a multiple sulfatase deficiency. I mean, it steals your children away. I mean, they'll become a shadow of who they are today until they're just not here anymore. For the first two months, I pretty much laid in bed and cried. I was not working, you know. I've lived my whole adult life basically being in control of everything. At least I always think I'm in control. You know, like you work harder, you work longer, you put in the time, and you can achieve whatever you put your mind to. And when you have something like MSD, you have no control. Like I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Say spare with mom and dad. It wouldn't be so hard if you knew how this was going to end. But he said his son to die on the cross. Like he knew when Jesus was born, like he knew how that was going to end. It wasn't going to end well. Right? I mean, not in a physical sense. I mean, it was pain and suffering. I think that God's given, like, Ty and I a gift just by letting our kids be as healthy as they are. I truly feel like I hear this gentle whisper of God saying, trust me, I know no matter what this plan is that he is in control. He has this plan for us. And no matter what happens in our lives in this situation, God is writing this book. This isn't our book to write.